right, 7.05. Thanks, Jan. BP is making significant progress on lowering that massive containment dome down into the Gulf over that spewing oil leak. Rob Masson is live in Venice this morning. Rob, this sounds easy enough, just lower a dome on top of the leaking well, but in reality, not nearly that simple. So this morning's progress is encouraging, I imagine. Absolutely. All eyes are on the Gulf of Mexico, about 60 miles southeast of where we are here in Venice. And everyone is hopeful that this containment uh, dome gets to where it needs to go and does the job everybody believes it needs to do, and that is to uh, contain up to 85 percent of the oil that's been leaking for nearly two weeks from the site of the uh, uh, old Deepwater Horizon uh, rig. And joining me now to talk about the progress of this operation is Curtis Thomas with BP. And Curtis, we understand it is making steady progress down to the floor of the ocean at this point. It is. It is a slow and steady progress. You know, we're talking about something that weighs about 90 tons, so it's a slow process that we're dropping this down until it hits the seabed floor. And there's a lot of currents and a lot of activity that we have to do it, deal with. It's a dynamic moving situation, so we're taking our time. How far down has it been dropped this morning? Last I heard it was about 4,000 feet down, and the total we have to go down is about 5,000 feet. So again, it's a slow process because the current on the top can be totally different than the current below, and we're just taking our time, and we have to, actually it's a kind of a needle in a haystack type of a situation where we have to make sure we're in the proper position. And the, the barge that's being used to lower it in place has a geopositioning structure on it to help it hold in place over the leak? Absolutely. We've got the latest technology working on this, so that even includes the barges that are using to lower this dome. It can maneuver itself into position, and we have uh, the underwater cameras that are actually looking to see exactly where the dome is, so it's repositioning constantly. It's in constant communication with the barge hands, with the deck hands who are actually operating the, the dome itself and to place it in the proper position. How optimistic are you that once it's put into place it can actually capture 85 percent of the leak? We're, we're cautiously optimistic. I mean, we know this has been, the domes have been used in shallow water. This type of technology and this, this procedure has never been done before. So, like I said, we've got some of the best minds in the world actually working on this thing. So we've engineered it as such where we think it will be effective, and we, we certainly hope it will be effective. That's not the only front we're fighting this on, though. That's just one of the containment fronts we're fighting this on. We're still continuing with our drilling another well that will be the final solution and it'll, and it'll actually stop the flow. And what can you tell us about at the current rate of progress? It looks like it might be able to reach the floor by sometime this afternoon, perhaps? It, it could very well this afternoon. And then the process comes with uh, installing the piping that goes from the dome itself up into the collection barge. Now that could take another couple of days, so we could see it in operation if successful by Monday. Will the pipe be run from the barge, which is currently lowering the, the box down over the leak at this time, or does another drilling barge have to be brought in? We'll have a couple of different drilling barges. One will offload the oil once we get it in. The barge that loaded will actually be the one that it will be hooked up to, and, and it will be a rotating process as we receive oil from the bottom of the floor. Some people might have thought that you might have been able to use some sort of flexible hose on top of the box to, to hook up to, to the box once it sets on the floor. but. From what I understand, it's too cold down there. You need hard pipe because uh, you have freezing temperatures, and other precautions have to be taken for those freezing temperatures as well, including methanol and, and some other uh, warm fluids, basically, correct? Yeah, there's a lot of different dynamics that come into play when you're talking about 5,000 feet of water. You know, the temperature, it's sweltering up above, but it's very cold down below. So if when you do have the oil that's coming up through the pipe, once we have this chamber going, we want to make sure that we don't get ice clogs uh, inside the tubing that's going up to the collection barge. So there will be a fluid that's pumped in down there beside the flow that's coming up, just to make sure that we don't have freezing. Curtis, in terms of the dispersants that are being used to deal with the oil that is leaking through, what can you tell us about that? It seems like there's a lot of it out there. Is, will some of it float, and does some of it settle to the bottom, and is it environmentally safe? Well, the idea with the dispersants is that it actually breaks up the oil into smaller molecules, and then microbes will eat that oil as part of the process that they do anyway. As far as the safety factor, you know, we've talked to NOAA, we've talked to scientists, and they say the dispersants it's a much better option than having the oil come ashore. So if you're going to weigh your two options, you would rather capture it in the water. You'd rather use all your forces in the water and fight it that way 
with dispersants rather than have it come ashore. Do we have any idea how long it takes the dispersants to break down? And, and I think that's on a different level. Um, from what I understand, it's a relatively quick process for it to break down into the smaller molecules. And then how long it takes for those microbes to digest those molecules and eat the bacteria, which they do anyway. That's their natural process. I'm not sure what that time frame is. Does the dispersant operation continue as you all try and put the containment dome over the lake this morning? Actually, it does because the the the, the sheen itself has actually shifted from the original site, so we're still able to fight it from the air, uh, just in a different location. So we did do um, some disbursements from air yesterday, about four overflights, and those appear to have been successful. Curtis Thomas, best of luck with the operation today. Appreciate you joining us this oh, thank morning. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And that's the story from here in Venice. Uh, that's the latest on the update with getting the containment box over the leaking site. Uh, hopefully that box could be put in place sometime by mid-afternoon if all goes well. Uh, they are dealing with some tricky currents down there, and perhaps they could start siphoning off some of that oil by as early as this Sunday if all goes well. Uh, we'll be waiting and watching, and I know the people here in Venice will be waiting and watching as well as uh, fishermen continue to go out and uh, and uh, bring in their catches uh, this afternoon. So there's an air of optimism here this morning as uh, hopefully we're nearing a, a, an operation that will bring up much of the oil that's been leaking for about two weeks now. So that's the very latest from here in Venice this morning. Jennifer, we'll send it back to you. All right, we'll be watching closely too, Rob. Thanks so much. Fishermen in St. Bernard Parish say they have more than enough help when it comes